Hi, welcome to my tutorial today. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to show you how to make an actual flamethrower. There are not too many good tutorials on YouTube for this, so hopefully this will help some of you out who are looking for a flamethrower tutorial. Um, just a side note, the visual effects like the particle quality won't be final. I just got these off Google, so they're not super high quality. I recommend making your own if you put this in your own game. However, that's all that's going to change for you is the visual effects. Okay, so let's get started here. So the first thing we need is textures, particles, and materials. Okay, so I have a texture that I got off Google. This is a sprite sheet. Essentially what it is, it's, it's a set of images and rows and columns that, that will basically look animated in a particle system. So they're, they're not really animated, but they look animated when set up in a particle system. So I recommend making your own because it'll be higher quality than this. But all right, so then what we need is we need to go to create material. We're going to just call this key fire mat. We're going to put this in the materials folder, and we need to do a couple things in here. Okay, so currently it's not, you can see behind it and stuff. So we need to go to the key fire mat overall, go to translucent. Okay, we're going to get a multiply node here, and I'll show you what this does in a second. We're going to get a constant, which you can just click one on your keyboard and then left click. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to make the, um, the images brighter. So I'm going to put this at 15. Okay, we're going to put this into emissive and then the alpha A into opacity. And now we have our fire particles. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to create a particle system on this. So we're going to right click in our particle folder, go to FX, Niagara system, or Niagara. And then you're going to do new system from selected emitters. If you are not too familiar with a particle system, don't worry. I'll explain it in layman terms for you. So go to fountain, and this will shoot particles up into the air. Okay. And then we're going to call this NS flamethrower. Okay. And then we're going to go in here. And now this is just a standard particle system. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off gravity force, turn it off. I'm going to turn off sphere location, we're going to go to add velocity and cone, and we're going to turn down the cone angle to about 10, and that should be good. That'll make it a little smoother and straighter. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the default sprite material, and we're going to call this fire, T fire, I believe that's it, T fire mat, yep, that's it. Okay, now as you can see, it's spawning them, but it's spawning them as like giant grids. So what we need to do is we need to count this out. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six across, and one, two, three, four, five. Five down. So that's X and Y axis. So we go to NS Flamethrower, we go to Sprite Renderer, and now this is very important. If you don't do this, it won't look good. So go to six on the sub-image on, on X and five, and now it looks proper. So remember, this is how Sprite Sheet works. They're individuals, so you count them right to left or right to down, and that's how you get the X. So this is X. This is Y. Okay. So now that we have that, we want to increase the spawn rate to about 200, I would say, and then we want to initialize particles. We want to make this about 12 to 16. I would say would be good. And so now we have an actual flamethrower. If you get too close, it doesn't look good. <laughs> but um, overall, I think it looks pretty good. You know, obviously with your own particles, it's going to look better. And you can add smoke to it by, at the end of the sprite sheet, add more smoke, more detailed smoke. Okay. So we have our particle, we have our materials, and we have our texture. So now what we need to do is we need to create the actual actor that's going to house this. Okay. So we're going to call this BP uh, Flamethrower. Okay. And if you want to know how I did that, just right click, blueprint class, actor. This is like a prefab in Unity if you're from Unity. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to on event tick spawn system at location. Okay, so we spawn this system at location. This is going to be our flamethrower that we just made, NS flamethrower right here. We are going to get actor location, and then we're also going to get actor rotation, okay, and we're going to do that, rotate, okay, so we actually have our flamethrower here, and if we click simulate, 
we can actually see it. Now we need to turn down how fast that's spawning. That's going to kill performance. So what we need to do is we need to go to system state, set this to once, 0 0.1, set it to 0 0.1, go to emitter state, go to once, and 0 0.1. Now this doesn't look like much, however, when you spawn it in game, since it's spawning on tick, it looks much better. Now in your final game, I recommend using what's called a timeline, so that works as a custom tick on the animation tick. Uh, because running on tick would be very performance intensive. That's not for this tutorial. Okay, so we have our, we have our flamethrower. Now we need to set it up in the player, which is he has a gun. Okay, so he has a gun, and we're going to shoot it out the barrel of the gun. Okay, so if you want to know how to get this model, it's just the Unreal template first person template. Okay, so I'm going to take the input action fire event which came with it, it was right up here. And then I'm going to spawn actor from class, okay? And I'm going to flamethrower is what we called it, so we called it VP flamethrower. I'm gonna split this, this transform, okay, by right clicking and splitting it. And then I'm going to get FP gun, and I'm going to get actor location. I'm sorry, not get actor location, get socket location because this has a socket on the skeleton name muzzle okay and then I'm gonna get the socket rotation and if you want to know how I did this just go to your skeleton this can also work on a static mesh and just go down here and make sure where is it skeleton tree make sure you have a muzzle if you don't just right click and click add socket okay so now that we have that uh, where is it? Right here. Now that we have that, we want to type in muzzle. Okay, muzzle. And we're just going to put that in here. Okay. And we are going to use on is tick, on is, uh, on tick, we're going to do is valid. Where is it? Is valid, so we want the question mark. Okay. And then we're also going to promote this to a variable. So we'll just call this flame thrower. Uh, flame thrower. I think I have a variable named flame thrower. So we'll just call flame thrower 2 here. Okay, so the reason we're doing an is valid node is because this runs on tick, it runs every frame. So if this is not actually spawn, like if it's gone, then we don't want it to check because it's going to point null pointer errors. So we're going to set actor location and rotation okay and then we're just going to take this code right here we get socket location and rotation and we're just going to put this in here put this in new location new rotation all right and then we are going to do one final thing and that is on begin play we are going to delay it by 0.2 seconds and then destroy it and this is inside the the uh, flamethrower particle. And the reason we're doing this is because we don't want like a thousand of these actors spawned. So it's going to spawn the actor on the character and then 0.2 seconds later it's going to destroy it and then we'll just keep spawning it. So make sure that um, another thing is make sure on input action fire pressed and released are both connected. That'll make it a hold down. Okay, so now when we do this it should work. Whoa, what the heck happened? Oh, my mistake. There's one more thing that we need to do. Um, if we don't do this, it will, like, as you can see, it'll um, make us go flying. Okay? So we actually need to take the flamethrower and put it in the target on set actor location rotation. Otherwise, it'll move the uh, rotation of the player. Okay. So now we can actually see the flamethrower. And we actually have a real flamethrower, and it moves in the rotation that we're shooting. So that is how you do the tutorial. Um, if you like this, please hit the subscribe button and like the video. Thank you.